Hi guys, it's Riley. So s summer vacation is coming soon, and obviously summer vacation is exciting for the kids, but for parents, it can be a little bit of a headache. You know, adults usually still have to work over summer vacation, but the kids are home all the time. So they have a problem of finding out or finding something for the kids to do. Um, and, you know, this is a problem in America as well as Japan. Um, but the difference being that in America, summer vacation is three months long. You know, as, as you probably know, the school year usually ends um, around late May or early June in America and starts back up at the end of August or maybe early September. So that's a, a long time for parents to have to find something for their kids to do. Um, one solution to that is summer camp. So that's what I'll be talking about in this episode. But before we get started with that, uh, let me do the Instagrams. So my Instagram is RileySullivanXD, and Sota's Instagram is EgoNoSota. So, uh, yeah, with... Without any further ado, let's get started. So basically, there are two kinds of summer camps, uh, to put it generally. Uh, there's kind of the short day camps where, you know, parents might drop their kids off um, and then they do something for the day and then parents pick them up after work, right? Um, I did that kind of summer camp um, when I was, how old, about 11? So the summer between elementary school and junior high school. I went to the YMCA's summer camp. Uh, if you're not familiar with the YMCA, it's like a, a culture center, I guess you could say. Usually there's like a gym um, attached to the building, but there's also cultural activities and things that happen through or at the YMCA. Um, so when I went uh, to this summer camp, I would get dropped off at the YMCA building, and then uh, the, we would take a bus, like all the, all the kids with a couple of camp counselors, uh, counselors being, I guess, something like a teacher or a chaperone, basically someone to take care of the kids. In my case, the counselors were also kids. I think most of us were, you know, elementary, junior, high school age, and the camp counselors might have been late high school. So maybe, I don't know, 17 or 16 or something like that. But anyway, we would get on a bus and then we would go to some kind of ex what, exciting location for the day. Like, um, I remember we went to a lake, we went to a museum. And the best, the best day was we went to an amusement park uh, to, you know, go on roller coasters and, and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of, um, yeah, day camp, which is maybe more common. Probably more people do day camp than do the other kind of camping. And I think it's also something similar to what kids do in Japan. I think probably a lot of kids do something like day camp where they go on some kind of activity every day or at least go to a, a place, um, you know, during the workday while parents are at work. But the main camp that I want to talk about today is called sleepaway camp. Um, so that would be a camp where kids go for a week or more and they sleep at the camp. So they don't, they don't come home at all during the time that they are at camp. Um, sometimes these kind of camps have like a religious affiliation, like it might be a Christian camp, or um, it's really common for Jewish kids to go to camp for like weeks at a time during the summer. Um, you not really, I don't have much experience with that, but... Yeah, that, that, that's definitely a thing. Um, some other kinds of sleepaway camps are, like, interest-focused. So there's, like, a space camp where kids learn um, how to be astronauts and learn about space and stuff. 
And there's Bandcamp, one of the most famous ones and one of the ones that's most often in like movies or TV shows um, where kids go and like practice instruments and stuff like that. Basically, they they practice for marching band or uh, brass band or something like that. Um, and then probably the most common one or the most general one is kind of like an outdoor skills camp, I guess you could say. Like, um, the camp is in the woods, in the forest, and, um, kids learn things related to camping, like what we would think of camping, you know, tent and building a fire and stuff like that. Um... So yeah, so at, at that kind of camp, prob that's probably like the main one when most people say summer camp, they probably imagine that kind of like outdoor skills camp or <laughs> whatever. Um, so in that one, you know, kids will go to some location in, in the countryside, usually in the forest, and there, there will be like cabins, right? So like kind of small houses, I guess you could say, and basically those cabins will be just beds, uh, bunk beds, right? So bunk beds means like beds one on top of the other, maybe like three levels of beds on each side of the small cabin is kind of like a common arrangement. Um, and maybe, maybe there'll be a bathroom attached to the cabin, but often not. The bathroom will be in a different, uh, building. So, um, in these cabins, obviously they will be separated boys and girls, right? So there will be boys cabins on one side of the camp and girls cabins on the other side of the camp or something like that. Um, and then during the actual camp, kids will do things like, uh, canoeing or, you know, if, if it's in the mountains, they might try like hiking or rock climbing or something like that. Uh, one, one kind of common one, or at least a stereotype is like to do kind of crafts that are based on Native American crafts. Like, um, I think the most famous one would be building a, or making a dream catcher, a dream catcher, which is like, oh, it's kind of hard to explain. It's like a, it's like a circular hoop or ring. Um, and then they have, they attach string inside of that ring so that it makes like a design kind of like a net I guess it kind of looks like a net but usually there's some kind of design in the center um, and then hanging from the bottom of the ring would be like some feathers or some beads or something like that um, it's a little bit difficult to explain so if uh if you're not sure what I'm talking about, go ahead and search Dreamcatcher, and um, it should come up, and you should see what I'm saying. Um, and then other other kinds of activities, you know, sports, maybe like archery, um, other kinds of like outdoor sports or activities. I'm not sure exactly what to say for that, but yeah, you know, like archery, um, maybe shooting guns, like not real guns, but like air guns or BB guns, they're called. Something like that might also happen at a summer camp. Um, one kind of stereotype with summer camps as well, because usually the kids that are going to this are maybe late junior high school age, so, you know, maybe like 14 years old-ish, maybe 13. Uh, so one stereotype is that a lot of people's like first... Um, romantic experience is at one of these summer camps. S something like, um, you know, at night when the, the camp counselors are sleeping, um, the boys and girls might sneak out of their cabins and uh, go skinny dipping in the lake or something like that. Uh, skinny dipping means uh, swimming naked, basically. That's kind of like a stereotype of something that happens at these camps. Um, or also like you meet a girl at summer camp and you have a whatever two week long relationship 
and then you don't see each other again until next summer, because probably you don't go to the same school or whatever, is also a stereotype. And a lot of movies kind of play on this stereotype. Actually, a lot of movies talk about summer camps in general. Uh, maybe one of the most famous ones is called The Parent Trap. Uh, it's about a girl or two girls who have to try to get their parents who are divorced back together. Um, and there's two versions of that movie. I think there's one from like the 60s or 70s, and then there's a newer one from, I'm not sure, maybe the early 2000s, uh, The Parent Trap. Uh, a more recent one is called Wet Hot American Summer. I think that one's kind of a comedy about a summer camp. Um, there's Moonrise Kingdom, which is a little bit more of like an artsy film, you might say, um, rather than a, a f like movie um, that, by Wes Anderson. If you've heard of that director, he's kind of famous for his style um, being kind of artsy. And then... Uh, Oh, yeah, Friday the 13th, um, a horror movie with Jason um, is often set in a summer camp. So they're, I forget what it's called, something lake. Um, they'll be like, it it's, oh, usually starts with like a bunch of teenagers at a lake and Jason, this crazy, like, I guess zombie guy, he, he has like a, a big knife, a machete um, and he attacks them. Anyway, so th those are some, if you're interested in watching um, movies about summer camp, those are some of the big ones that come to my mind. Um, there might be some TV shows as well on Netflix, um, but I can't think of one at the moment. I'm sorry. Um, I think there's one coming out soon on Netflix called Rim of the World. That one takes place uh, at a summer camp, but I think it's also about aliens. So that one maybe is a little bit more um, sci-fi than than the other ones I talked about. Um, yeah, so I think that about does it. I'd like to know from you guys if you or your kids did anything like this sort of summer camp, um, sleepaway camp, or the kind of shorter day camp. Uh, yeah, so what what did you or your kids do during summer um, when the parents were at work? Uh, yeah, if you'd like to talk to us, uh, me, Riley Sullivan XD, or Sota Egono Sota on Instagram, um, yeah, please do. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>